Welcome to Legends of Greyskull, the podcast that dives deep into the mythology of Masters of the Universe, with your hosts Matthew Dooch and Sean Scavana. News, reviews, remasterings and more are just ahead on Legends of Greyskull. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 64 of Legends of Greyskull. The fan podcast where we discuss the history, the mystery, the magic, and mythology of He-Man, She-Ray, Tyrannia, Theria, Nordor, Primus, New Adventures, Old Adventures, Ladybird, UK Annuals, Comics, Mini Comics, anything and everything you can think of with that He-Man, She-Ra, Masters of the Universe, Princess of Power, that Mattel logo down in the corner. I'm Matthew Dooch. Apologies if I don't sound as robust as I usually do. I ha- I'm battling a cold this week, um, so if that didn't, if that intro didn't pack as much punch as it usually does, I apologize. But with me, as always, is Mr. Sean Scavarna. Sean, how are we doing today? I'm fighting allergies, and I don't know why we're doing this. There wasn't anything interesting that happened all week. Nothing at all. Well. <laughs> All right, folks, nothing <laughs> happened. Uh, Wrapping up episode 64. We want to thank you all for joining us. We just want to let you know we were alive and still breathing because we're Matt's good. Sick and I'm fighting allergy attacks left and right in the last 24 hours. We're, we're just, yeah, we're, we're walking wounded, but we're here, people. Um, no, we, we have so much to cover that I'm worried what time I'm going to bed tonight because this is a nuts, nuts, nuts last two weeks. Yes, we are. We are not going to bed tonight. Mm -mm. Now, this is our slumber party episode. We're going to talk about all this stuff. This is like, this is nuts. That's all I can say. I keep saying it. All night long. All night. Oh, wait. That's something else. (laughs) Dancing on the ceiling. (laughs) We've lost it, folks. Hello. (coughs) <coughs> is it podcasts you're looking for? <laughs> Real quick, before we get going here. Before I go into more Lionel Richie numbers. That too. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I want to give a, a, a few shout outs. <clears throat> As we've said, there has been an amazingly increasing number of subscribers every week. Uh, thank you to all you guys listening, YouTube, Podbean, uh, Podomatic, even you guys over on iTunes. We appreciate you all. But I want to give a couple special shout-outs right now because um, there have been quite a few new subscribers that have also been commenting, and we really appreciate it. It helps with the YouTube algorithm, and we just like talking to you guys. So, mm-hmm. um, special shout outs to put your guns on. Uh, he's been yeah. a real cool dude. Um, I know you've been talking to him back and forth. Uh, Felipe Terrazas, uh, thanks for commenting, bud. We really appreciate it. Pride of Grayskull, he's been going back through some of our old stuff too. He's been commenting. Uh, Casey Moulton, thank you. Uh, well subversed, appreciate it. And of course, Skelly Vader, uh, Manny Gonzalez. Thanks, guys. You you continue to support us. We love it. Uh, Aunt Francis, Lugbur Shack, Rasputin Evil. Thank you, all <laughs> you guys. Um, nice. We really we really appreciate the likes, subscribes, and we love the comments. We love talking to you guys. So um, appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, I I really got a kick out of talking to. Uh, it, it's it's put your guns out. Is that what it was? I, I can't remember. Put his name. your just, guns on. I think. Put your guns on. I'm put sorry. Put, put your put guns, your guns on. on. So I I got a kick out of that because he is that missing link we've talked <clears throat> about, where he started with 2000 X. Yep. Yep. And exactly. he went backwards, and now he and I see eye to eye on some of the stuff that appeals to us about the vintage, which. That made me just go like, oh, dude, like he and I, we, we could just sit there and probably talk shop all yep. night long and not get bored, which 
all night. There you go. Um, <laughs> and for those of you in the audio, you're missing Matt doing a hell of a head bob there to some Lionel Richie. Oh, um, it, but yeah, it, it is it is really cool to see on YouTube. There are people responding and I get a kick out of it. I absolutely love having people that we don't get to normally talk to coming out to the front and being like, hey, you're doing great. Or, hey, I really want to, I love when you talk about this or that. That's that's what we've been waiting to hear for a while. So it's really cool that this stuff is starting to really, um, I, I guess it's, it's like rolling down a hill, you know? It's like we're getting yeah. momentum with this every single week, each episode we're doing, which is awesome. Absolutely. We appreciate it, guys. Keep it up. All right. Let's jump right into it because we got so much to talk about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Brace yourselves. Here we go, guys. Uh, let's start with... Let's do PowerCon. PowerCon is coming soon. All right. So September 11th and 12th. We have PowerCon, the He-Man and She-Ra convention in Anaheim, California. Um, so basically the big news out of here is that we finally got to see some of these exclusives we've been wanting to see. That coming yeah, through we were for you, Sean? Yep, yep, I'm, it's coming through, no problem. All we right. were pretty wrong with what we were thinking. So We were completely wrong, so let's jump it is over what there. It is. And this is available now, guys. If you're planning on attending PowerCon, you can go to the website right now. You can buy your tickets. You can buy your exclusives. You can go get your hotel and then book your flight. Everything's up, ready to go. Um, if you're not attending PowerCon, they will have a non-attendee pre-sale that will begin next Saturday, May 22nd at 9 a.m. Pacific and noon Eastern. So, um check that out if you are interested the day passes are 35 dollars each <clears throat> 30 at the door that's wrong why would they be cheaper at the door <laughs> um mm -hmm. but the weekend pass gets you in saturday and sunday is only 60 dollars um and we talked about that already i still think those are amazing prices um yeah. for a two-day con you know, 35 bucks one day, 60 bucks both days. You can't beat that. Definitely. Um, and I would pimp the power passes here, but they were sold out even before I went to get my tickets this morning. And I think I, I got on about an hour after it started. So, yeah, extremely limited. Yes, they were. Hmm. I wonder what the numbers were for that. I don't know. But, I, again, with everything else, I think it's just like – uh uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I think it's just the same. I think it just as, um, what am I trying to say? It's even more limited than usual. Yeah. I think. Cause if, if you're going to cut general capacity, which you have to do in the year 2021, I think you're going to cut the power passes too. You're not going to mm -hmm. leave them full force and then cut general admission, you know? Um, because sure. that's got, that's got exclusive green room stuff and everything else. So I have to imagine they were even more limited than usual this year. Um, but let's look at the exclusives here. Exclusive number one, the masters of the universe origins horde four pack. Um, and this is going to be $150 gets you all four figures. You get blue skin filmation Hordak, uh, the dark faced Grizzlor. And two Horde Troopers, one in black and one in red. Sean, I know we're not the biggest Origins guys. Everybody knows that. But just mm -hmm. the, the figures of themselves, what do you think about them? I think it's a cool way of nodding it. You know, they didn't get to uh, do much with Shira for her uh, anniversary. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a back way into celebrating Shira by at least. Here's a bunch of Horde stuff. And getting the variant versions, at least, 
uh, like the black uh the black faced um Rizlor in particular and then uh in the classics line the blue skinned Hordak was a variant and everything yep. so there is that kind of you know it it makes sense because you know if you really want the blue skin Hordak there it is if you don't need it you can go off the peg and hit it head up target or whatever right so and it's cool to get at least two horde troopers since that they haven't even announced those yet, if I remember right, for Origins. So the they're on whole, the way, you know. <laughs> the that's the thing. The only figure here that was technically announced before this is Hordak. Yeah. You know, at Grizzlor and the Horde Troopers, this will be your first chance to get them. Um mm -hmm. obviously their regular versions are gonna come shortly after, I'm I'm sure. But you're not mm -hmm. going to get the red and the black. You're not going to get the dark face Grizzlor. It's it's one of those neat uh, variants that works well for exclusives. Sure, and and uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that aren't the most thrilled to know the Lords of Power Merman is on its way. Plus now Lords of Power Beast Man. Yeah, which I know we'll get to. We'll that. get to I that. We'll get to that. But the <laughs> fact is, these I feel are going to just be. If you got it at PowerCon, you have it. If you didn't right. get it at PowerCon, you're just going to get the only variation, which is the regular version, because it, it doesn't make sense to have these variants right. on the shelves quite the same way as the Lords of Power, even though that was still like, why, why, <laughs> why are you doing that? But again, ours is not to question why. No. <laughs> um, real quick, do you think that those Horde Troopers armor are going to explode off of them? Well, I I looked at the photos and I noticed that the circle is there where it, when you it's, pressed it when the original it's a it, separate they would piece. Pop apart. You can especially so, tell on that red one over there. That is a that middle face is definitely a separate piece. So I I'd, I'd say possibly because I don't see why they would make that circle be its own thing like right. we're seeing in there. So. I, I would say sure, but then again, my my own exclusive ideas of what I thought the power con stuff was going to be was off. <laughs> so who knows? I could be off about this one, but that that's too telling. Yeah, so I think so too. I think I think they'll have some some sort of that feature. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, though, those those horde troopers are tempting. I'm not going to lie. I wonder. I know <laughs> origins are shorter than classics, but I wonder if robots, if it wouldn't, you know. If it wouldn't look all right, because especially the the red and the black, that's that's a cool variant. Mm -hmm. And honestly, as a thinking from a kid's perspective, with the way origins are incredibly modular, with like the hands in, you know, like all the different pieces that pop off, that's pretty cool to have He Man really beat up a horde trooper to where like he's ripping like his hand off and stuff, you know. Yeah, well, if you, if you were doing dioramas. Or, yeah. or at least doing like toy photography, these would be awesome to have because you could do that kind of stuff without ruining a classics figure. Right. And, and so, you know, I mean, I know these are more expensive, but it is the idea of yeah. when the new ones come out, as in yeah. the typical ones that everybody's going to get at Target and Walmart. I mean, those are going to be a heck of a lot of fun to just rip apart and have He Man right. just like you see him slicing through them with the power sword if you do toy photography animation like rj clark and uh, you know whoever you know it'd be really fun shira ripping so. a leg off and beating grizzlor with it just, yeah yeah <laughs> fun all right next up uh the origins faker two pack this will get you the leo inspired faker along with the duplicate his evil robotic steed Mm -hmm. right. And this will run you sixty dollars for both of them. Mm -hmm. oh. And yeah, I <laughs> for me for me I I okay no for starters I'm not the biggest fan of the cats for the origins line because they don't no. have that paw articulation which to me nope. makes it just look silly when you're trying to put the cat in any other position than standing there. And now they're giving. The claws almost, I wouldn't say they're the 2000X treatment, but it's no. a step going in that direction because you have the metal claws on the hand, on the paws to give right. that robotic feel to uh, duplicate. 
And, and the Leo figures for me, and, and again, you know, I might not be a true fan because I'm not a big person <laughs> like this. I, I personally don't need the Leo stuff because I'm not really that big on variants and all this other stuff for me. It's, I'm a fan for my reasons and that's not one of them. So when I, if I saw this and I was into origins, I'd probably be leaning more towards the cat than faker. And even then it's not really that big of a, like, Ooh, it's more like, Oh, okay. Yeah. They went there. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's, it, I don't know. It's, it's not that big of a deal for me. It's not that big of a difference. It's basically paint around the eyes. Um, the bracers are colored differently and he comes with an orange havoc staff. Like, yeah. and then like you said, duplicate is he's, he's battle cat repainted and he's got big metal claws for his front paws. And again, they still didn't put that ankle, ankle articulation in there to where he's got these huge metal claws and you can't even do like a swiping at anybody with them because he can't exactly, swipe. you know, it's like, ah, oh, you guys, you were so close. Yeah. Again, it's, it's, it's you, you had one job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they had and to retool I, I, those front paws anyways, cause they're completely different. Why not? Yeah. You know? And, and, and I, I don't know, for me, the paint apps on it aren't that amazing to me. No. I think it's a robot cat. It just looks like, it, it looks like it was huffing paint. Yeah. And that just makes it like look really odd to me. So on that level alone, it's like this, this, you know, I, I, I know that, that uh, there was a little bit of hollow balloon. It's like, I, I personally think this is not the best offering they could have offered. It's more of a, if right. you want it, huh? you know, to me, it's like, Mm, which also uh, makes it again makes it the perfect exclusive perfect you know? exclusive if you're so, really into it there you got that sure exactly all right next up we got the secrets of grayskull accessory pack now this is the one mm -hmm. that i i flipped for and mainly just for one piece um, i think i know which piece but maybe i'm wrong but you got the uh, you got the gray skull robot spacesuit as an actual articulated figure. You get the dungeon grate with a that pink tentacled monster reaching out of it. Hmm. Could that be the mysterious Orlax? Mm. Seems like he's pretty prominent in this accessory pack. That's true, and <laughs> and you kind of nodded at that last time. So hmm. yeah. I think you yeah. might have something there, maybe. <laughs> and then the piece that I love and the reason I'm getting this is the Spirit of Grayskull accessory, that floaty, green, ghost skull-faced I should have put money that on that. we've wanted yeah. for so long. I should have put money on that being the one because that, that was the one. All of it made me just go, ooh. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I honestly was on the edge of, of telling you when you were getting the tickets, like, I want that one. And then I, I thought about it for a minute. And my son, when I got the classics, gray skull, mm -hmm. he absolutely loved that space suit. Yeah. The problem is I don't want him to break the stuff from classic, you know, the classics gray skull because of the price right. point that you're having now. And then when I saw that, I'm like, Oh, sh you know, like <laughs> he'll grab this. I, I have pieces of beast man all over the place. There's some upstairs. There's some downstairs. He has beat the, the beast man origins figure to bejesus and back. And so all I'm thinking is he's going to get his hands on this exclusive. That is harder to find. <laughs> if I get this thing, he is never going to let me have it back. And it's just going to be everywhere. And I'm going to go, I got this thing. And now I don't even have it all <laughs> in one place. So that was why I'm like, I for as much as I'd love that spirit of Grayskull, everything else about it makes me go, oh, God, if my four-year-old got its hands on it, I'm screwed. So yeah. I, I backed out completely. But the spirit of Grayskull is definitely, that made me happy because me being who I am, it's like, oh, God, it's so good to see that again for the first time since oh, yeah. you know almost 40 years ago in the mini comics. And it's obviously translucent, which I love. I'm fingers crossing that it's going to be glow in the dark too. That would just oh. 
That would just yeah. put it over the top. Um, that would be cool. And I, I don't, I, I forget if I mentioned it or not, but thirty bucks, thirty bucks gets you all three of those. Now, granted, mm-hmm. you know the dungeon grate and the gray skull are just basically static pieces, <clears throat> but you still get a full articulated robot suit too. Like you get a whole figure and two accessories for thirty bucks. I mean, this is the steal of the show, mm-hmm. both in uh, selection and <clears throat> excuse me, and in value. Yeah, agreed. And that one's, I like that that one, people were asking if we were going to even get the space suit mm-hmm. because he wasn't, it wasn't in the, uh, the gray skull play set. And right. on top of that, then we have the dungeon great thing. And what's funny is uh, when that was announced, I know uh, on, on uh, council, the first ones we were talking about that after gray skull got announced and they showed off everything. And I, I want to say it was, one of us on there, one of the three of us, and we were like, yeah. I bet we, when PowerCon comes around, we might see an exclusive. And then I actually <laughs> asked Kelly, I was like, did we actually say that and recorded it on the show? And she's like, yep. I'm like, awesome. We saw that coming <laughs> from like a mile away, at least. That was cool. Yeah, no, it's 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 a neat set. It's going to give mm-hmm. a lot of people stuff they want. And, <clears throat> you know, it's... And they, I don't know. There's a part of me that says they had to have had it playing the whole way. Um, even the way the dungeon grate, it looks like down at the bottom there, there's like a little seam in it. And I know on the New Origins Castle Grey School, it doesn't sit flat to the floor. I brought that up from that first preview pick. So it mm-hmm. looks like that's actually going to be able to like slide and lock in there instead mm-hmm. of just like setting on top of one of the floors. So. Mm-hmm. So does that mean you're going to get an Origins Gray Skull to see how it plugs into everything? No, no. <laughs> no. I'm just curious because I, I, I thought you. the same thing. <laughs> I got it for the for the uh, spirit. I yeah, don't know what I'll I, do I, with the other two pieces, but that's exactly what I would have gotten for too. So, yep. All right, then we got. Might as well run through them here. We got the the novelty pin set this year. Uh, it's got the, the Snake Men Snake, the Skeletor Battle Armor Bat, uh, Ninjor's Dragon, uh, that winged flag creature from the Vintage Gray Skull, and the Zodak Cosmic Enforcer symbol. I think Retro Rags usually does those, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then we got two of the PowerCon, uh... 2021 pins a vintage style and a revelation style Uh, then on the t-shirts this year they've got arachnid nothing to do with web store uh deviling that is definitely not imp (laughs) periscope which is nothing like mechanic nope not at all and Stallion, which is definitely mm. not Swift Wind. <laughs> but yeah, just lots. Of, and those are uh, $20 each for the shirts, $10 for the PowerCon pins, and $40 for the novelty pin set. So lots of great exclusives uh, you can get if you're attending PowerCon right now. <clears throat> uh, and yeah, go to thepowercon.com. And you can find all the info, FAQ, tickets exclusives, hotel. If you want to become an exhibitor or you uh, you qualify for the press, go ahead and head on over there. Check them out. Uh, next. Let's do some origins. Tell us what we got, Sean. We have a shiny battle armor He-Man on a shiny battle cat, and we have uh, let's see here, and and these are tiny for me, but what Web Store and uh, Lords of Power Beast Man, uh, Stinkor, Green Goddess, and the uh, Wind Raider. Uh, so what are you excited for out of this? Well, me being the origins guy of uh, two of them, uh, no, 
Um, uh, if, if I was into Origins, I'd say uh, the Lords of Power Beast Man. Actually, the fact that he the variations on him actually look pretty fun. I kind of dig that. Green Goddess because of my mini comic love yeah. from the Alcala. Um, and I've actually been a, become a huge web store guy over the last year or two. Um, and that was because of classics and yeah. 2000 X. Um, I, I guess. So, I yeah. Can, and yeah, again, that's just kind of the thing. It's like Lords of power beast man probably stands out the most to me just because he's so weird and different. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that'll come up more later, but, you know, web store, Stinkor, goddess, like again, the goddess is just a repainted Tila. Stinkor mm-hmm. looks like Stinkor. Web store looks exactly like his vintage counterpart. You know, I mean, yep. it's <coughs> excuse me. So yeah, it's it's the same thing I've said about Origin since the beginning. They're just when they do something that's kind of a little different. That's when I go like, oh, okay, maybe you know. Um, yeah, I, the the one thing that I'm thinking it, that they could do since they're doing web store, and I know it's the the vintage looking web store, so yeah. obviously this won't be completely identical. But if they made that the spider body, yeah, and you could pop that that uh, top half into sure. the spider body like 2000 X, so- I would need a web store, and I would need <laughs> that because that right off the bat you got me sold because at least it would represent something for that character that i thought was an amazing looking version of the character even though he died right but um yeah i i uh, that would be enough to definitely get me uh, at least web store and then the the battle armor he-man one that we're looking at yeah i he he's battle damage and i see they're scratching on the leg when i yeah. took a look at it earlier and, and he's battle got a different cats. face Battle Cat's got the scratches on him too. Mm. So, uh, and that, that's supposed to be a Target exclusive, from what I understand. It is. Oh. So, that'll be fun for anybody who has the, yeah. uh, the Rise of, of uh, Evil 2 pack problem. I'm sure they're going to love this. Uh, and then it also, the, the one thing uh, that was pointed out in some other groups is now they have the little tiny creatures. I know. On that 2 pack. That's the whole so, reason I want that two pack. <laughs> there you have, and and I know there were a couple other people complaining. It's it's not only is it you know uh, an exclusive, but now they're doing that, and it, it's like okay, so yeah. For for our yeah. audio listeners, the battle armor He Man Battle Cat two pack, like Sean said, it has shiny chromed armor for He Man. It's also got the full gray power sword. With the yeah. fixed handle, and, and this will be the be first time reason. that's available. I forgot then, about the, the power sword, yeah. But yeah, that it comes with a cool little base diorama with two of those little creatures that we're so used to seeing on the box art ever since the vintage line. And yeah, yeah, I'd love to have those little creatures and the little diorama too. Honestly, that'd be fun to put some figures on, but. <laughs> it, it, it's interesting because like it, there there's always this well what would this look like if they did it this way yeah. and seeing battle armor he-man with shiny armor is automatically like i don't like that <laughs> I, I honestly because to me nothing about he-man like the only time i can think of where he-man had shiny armor is the end of the 87 movie when they're saying goodbye to jewel well and, and that was uh... like he had b- He'd been there and gone through so much that, like, yeah, shine him up a little. Give him a little break, you know? Flying in, Fist in, He-Man had the shiny armor, didn't he? That's, okay, yeah, that's true. But that that's probably why this is messing with my head, because I do equate it to something not battle armor. Because battle armor yeah. always had the dull sheen mm-hmm. to it. And I just equated that to, like, night armor, because night armor usually was not shiny. It was just protective. Right. And uh, so in that way, it's it's seeing him in this look, and it's not being flying fist. There's that, and, and also thunder punch. Now that I think about it, they did do the back metal on uh, parts of the harness there. Parts of it, yeah, but, but not as yeah. Crummy, it's so not but. as this, but it it really does make me just go like I don't like the the shiny at all. Like that's that's really, 
it's like it's taking the place of Flying Fist. And Flying Fist was an was a uh, hinted at on uh, some of the card art recently. Was it Hordak? Hard, hard, uh, Buzzsaw Hordak's card Buzzsaw back. Hordak. Mm-hmm. So so it's like yeah okay but eh, what, and maybe that's do, like what they should maybe that's what they should have done honestly if they'd release this for Flying Fist then it's going mm-hmm. okay here's a reason to have another He Man sure you know it's and that's what it always be with me for Origins it's like you guys it just always feels like you're one step away and mm-hmm. I, to me I honestly question. Why you're releasing a Battle Cat when basically Battle Cat's one of the easiest figures to find out of the Origins line. Like, he is everywhere. Walmart, Target, you can always find a Battle Cat. So, yeah, I don't know. I just, I I, I question how much they're, they're, I mean, He-Man and Skeletor are evergreen figures. You've already got the deluxe variants. And mm-hmm. now you're releasing a two pack, you know. I just let's call it 2000 X PTSD. I don't know, but I, it always makes me a little wary to see all these He Man and Skeletors coming out. Mm-hmm. And I mean, honestly, the only reason that I could see people real and I, I could be completely wrong, the only reason I could see people really going for this one in particular, if it was me, it'd be the full power sword. Yeah, and it'd be those little creatures, <laughs> and for however much it's it's going for, it's like I don't even know if it's worth that to me because a power sword you can almost <laughs> just get a you know like a three D printed one if you're yeah. if you don't like the one that comes with the figure, which I personally don't like that that pa- the half power sword the way they did them in the the line to begin with, but um, or just get the uh, Prince Adam and just spray paint it and be done, you know, like it, yeah. that's a it customize that thing and be done with it. But uh, that's kind of annoying to me. It's like, okay, something that everybody would want, they put in an exclusive because I, I have yet to hear anybody say that they're thrilled with those power swords. Right. So, you know, like that is something, Ooh, people would want that, but now we're going to put it in something that target who is, you know, they're, they're <coughs> horrendously known as being, <laughs> really bad with the exclusives. Great idea. You know, like, I mean, you know, nah. real quick side note. I stopped in a target today and I actually mm-hmm. saw GI Joe classified figures. They yeah. Actually, okay. I had never seen any in store before and they had a full peg of them. Nice. So, you know, hang in there guys. Stuff yeah, is getting they, better out there. Apparently if, if you wait one year. Yeah. You might get them next year. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a uh, G.I. Joe classified was the hardest thing for most collectors to find last year, other than Origins figures. Yeah. So, yeah. Ain't that the truth? Mm. All right. Then we've got, and this is uh, courtesy of Pixel Dan's video, we got a little sneak peek at Mosquito, who was supposed to be. A deluxe figure released at the same time as Buzzsaw Hordak, but apparently they ran into some production problems because Buzzsaw Hordak is hitting shelves now. And uh, it looks like Mosquito is just coming out of the prototype stage. So, um, <clears throat> But he showed him off a little bit in the video with Pixel Dan. He's got the blood pumping feature works. He's got two heads, and he's got this... Uh, like energy sucking effect that wraps around the chest of another figure and kind of comes back to his uh, nose. Um, mm. I'm a sucker for effects. You know that. I love spell casting blasts and, you know, everything else. So right off the bat, I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool for a deluxe figure. Yeah. And half of this stuff you can intermix, at least with uh, classics. So there is that feeling of, you know, if you wanted to really go there and you could use it maybe with like Evil Lynn has the spell casting hand. You yeah. could actually maybe use that on her and have her uh, holding somebody by the chest with her magic or whatever if you want to go that route. But uh, no, I, 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 I think we said it the other episode when we talked about the figures that we don't really need to complete anything <laughs> is... I'm right. I'm in agreement with you completely. It's like Mosquito is never on a list of anything I need. So when I see 
when I see mosquito, I'm like, well, there's something I don't need already. So, okay. <laughs> On to other things. Right. No, I just, I just like that effect. That's the best part of the yeah. video for me. It's like, that's what I'm going to collect origins for. I want, I want that little creature, the base. I want that <laughs> energy effect, you know. Spirit of Grayskull. Spirit of Grayskull. <laughs> uh, and last in origins news the latest wave, as we talked about, I think we did talk about this last time, the Merman, Evelyn, Fisto, and Faker wave is hitting. It hit in Malaysia last time we talked. It has since hit in Canada. But the Canadian Mermans, Mermans, Mermen, Mermans, they have a special sticker on them that says L-O-P, and has a power sword going behind the L and through the holes in O and P. Thoughts? Uh, I, uh, the first thought in my head was all we got to do is change the P to a G and we got a logo. That would be kind of fun. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Um, <clears throat> it's weird to me that they have to mark that figure. Uh, I get, it, again, it, it comes from us having that, what is the line? You right. know, what is it meant for? Is it meant for kids? Is it meant for collectors? Is it both? Because the Lords of Power thing, like, again, you know, like you were, we talked in the, the episode where we were talking about the figures and it's like, okay, you're walking down the aisle and you see Merman, but then there's that on it. And it's like, most people who are, you know, just the standard people at Target or standard yep. people at Walmart, they're not going to see that and understand what the heck is happening here. Just like they probably won't understand the 2000X Masters logo with the evil right. end bearing it. So it's like, it's fun for people like us to see it and go, oh, that's, that's fun, you know. But then it's like, you know, again... The whole way, the whole line, not all the figures, the original figures have been out yet, as far right. as I can remember. And now here we are with like variants of variants and stuff. And it's, it's very like, I, I can't, I still can't make heads or tails. There's certain things like the box art giving you maybe like, oh, this might be coming out a wave or two down the line. Just keep your eye open for it. But then there's stuff like this and it's like, I don't get it. Yeah. I still don't get it. Well, and I don't get why they use this logo. All it says is L-O-P. A exactly. casual fan is not going to go down there and go, oh, Lords of Power. Okay, this is based on those original prototypes. Mm -hmm. you exactly. know, if you're going to put it on there, at least spell it out. Lords of Power, not L-O-P. That, mm -hmm. you know, they like you said, on the Evil Inn, they used the 2000X logo. The whole Masters yeah. of the Universe. On Hordak, they put the Evil Horde. On Shira, they put Princess of Power. And now for Lords of Power, probably one of the most obscure uh, titles, because it never actually got off the ground, they're going to mm -hmm. just put L.O.P.? Like, mm -hmm. what's that about? What You know, it doesn't explain anything to anybody. Yeah. Except for the people, like I said, uh, then that's a collector thing. But, right. you know, like it, it, th this line, it, it's it, it does have that feeling. And I, I, I hate to to reference uh, the, the uh, uh, Scott. Um, Scott Knight, like always says, it, when you add two things together, it don't make sense. It's a sofa bed or whatever. And it's like this is kind of where I start going the hell, you know, like, <laughs> is this a collector line? Because it's not really, when you look at these figures, I never look at them and think, wow, this is something that's going to be worth something 20 years from now. Right. It, they, they don't look as good as the originals. There is a functionality to them. My, my son, four-year-old son yeah. absolutely loves that. He can rip these things apart and kill them now. And right. obviously like beast man's everywhere. But he's not going to look at that and give a crap of LOP and all this stuff. And right. and so I, it's like, I, I, I can't make heads or tails. At least like with classics, I knew that was an adult collector line. We were good to go there. And, and you can display them and you can, you know, all that stuff. But this is like, okay, kids. But then why would kids care about Lords of Power? Well, it, uh, yeah, uh, and all these variants coming out when it's, you know, not even a year since, since the line has been out. Right. And it's it's just... 
I don't, I don't get it. I, <laughs> the, the, the brand manager of this line is somebody that is a, a curiosity and a mystery to me because of why they're doing what they're doing is, is that's the best I can say. Fair enough. And we'll leave our origins <laughs> talk there. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Yeah, let's do this. Oh, we're going into the new, new, new stuff. Okay. Let's He-Man do the new, new, new. and the Masters of the Universe. In CGI. A Netflix <laughs> original series. Yeah. From the people that brought you Troll Hunters, which actually was a really good show. Okay, so we've got inbox photos of He-Man, Skeletor, and Battle Armor He-Man from the new CGI animated series um, that's coming from Netflix this fall. Um, we saw that leaked image a month or so ago of He-Man on Battle Cap. Um, but this is our first real clear look at it. And just right off the bat, these look Fun. Um, mm -hmm. I love He-Man's face here. He's got very much a uh, it's 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 a good guy face. Like it's it's stereotypical good guy. Like I'm the strongest man in the universe, but I'm also fun. And let's go mm -hmm. have an adventure. Like I'm gonna take care of you. Mm -hmm. Um, Skeletor looks very demonic. I really like what they did with actually making his his hood more like like it comes down farther and it drapes a bit more um i think we were right on <clears throat> we were right on target with this is going to be very much tech power based um especially as we see in battle armor he man there he's got all this big red armor that massive looking power sword Everything just looks big proportions, you know, big muscles, very, uh, I never saw troll hunters, but t to me it's very uh, how to train your dragon and all that. Like, it's He-Man updated for a modern audience, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agreed. I mean, like, I it, when we saw that initial silhouette image to announce this was going to be happening... You know, everybody, well, what's what's it going to look like? And 2000X, it's got that vibe with the the, the way the characters were mm -hmm. uh, body type wise and all that stuff. And now that I'm seeing this, it's like, I, I will say the, the things that I like the most is actually getting to see the rendering of the animation on the boxes yes. more than anything right now. Yes. Because we've been waiting to see <clears throat> a high res what is He-Man's face going to look like? What's And Skeletor, we only had the hood and the very bottom of his face with the mm -hmm. red eyes. So now we finally get a good a good glimpse of him. And I really dig the look of him for this show in that animation. Yes. Um, I like I like it, all the, the that green glow he's got going on, like on his, yeah. on his neck and chest. And it I looks agree, like probably yeah. his armor, the eyes on his armor are probably going to light up. Tell me that figure is yeah. not going to have a light up feature. Well, the, the thing is, and uh, it, it, it just dawned on me, like we, <laughs> when we saw those initial, um, the the initial offering video or the the screen caps from that video from Mattel. Um, yeah, I pointed out in my notes, I was like, He Man's armor is glowing now. Yes. So the fact that Skeletor's is too, I kind of dig. Okay, we have an interesting. Uh, you know, like both of them are going to be radiating power when they're yep. using their abilities. And that's interesting to me on a, on a level that mm -hmm. we've never seen that in an animated He-Man to this point. So that's going to be a really cool update of their visuals, at least. Um, the actual, the actual, like the design of the, the, the uh, figures, I mean, it, to me, the first, knee-jerk reaction i had probably was they made me think of imagine x figures like the big ones the, yeah. the 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 chunkier ones and all that kind of stuff but they they're a little more defined than the imagine x line goes but there is that like they're a hunk 
a plastic kind of a figure and oh, yeah, they they, you know it, it, go for it <laughs> no i was just gonna say they look they look big they look bulky they look basically how we looked at masters when we were kids like these were big sure. figures and yeah and based on they are window i think the window box packaging really lends it to that because i'm when i saw that initially i was thinking like those uh the Marvel and DC, the Titan series, you know, mm -hmm. but I think these are going to be six inch scale based on the hands that are in the, the photos. Yeah. But they just yeah. kind of, because of that type of packaging, they look bigger, but I still think they're going to be a big bulky figure on the shelf. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's cool too. Like we're finally getting it. And, and this is the best version so far of like, okay, here's what the new harness is going to look like because yeah. we had the, the low res CGI uh, image here. We get to finally see what that, that new logo looks like and how the armor all works on, on both He-Man and Skeletor and the battle armor. And it's like, I, I, personally, I think the red armor on the battle armor just makes him, it's too much. That's just yeah. me, I guess. I, I'm I'm not impressed by that one because again, battle armor. My brain is already trained into that should be silver or that should be like a like a knight armor kind of thing yeah. that he puts on. And having it be big and red makes me just automatically think of like snout spout. He needs <laughs> to have like the the uh, the water canisters on his back, like in the classics version. Um, he's got Skeletor a, he's got a is, face mask too. Did you see that? He. He does, and then the other thing that that I noticed, and I'm like, where are they going with this? Is his left hand has two fang like daggers coming out of the armor, which made me go, is this going to be like a snake armor thing then? Yeah, it looks like it looks like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like and little... it's like I think um, I think Ruben originally was the one that came up with the, the snake armor design and Ruben's also, I guess mm -hmm. the guy working with this. So it's almost like, I bet that's where they're going with this. I bet they, I don't think they're going complete snake armor, but it wouldn't surprise me if he had like something like pincers that come out and no, then he can like, yeah. you know, knock people out of the way or something, maybe on the show. I don't know. It's, it's but, reminiscent of the snake armor. It's reminiscent of eternity war a lot. I feel. And mm -hmm. I I dug Eternity War. By the end of it, when they got to that final form costume, um, mm -hmm. I really liked it. So I'm I'm digging this. You know, I look mm -hmm. at it and I see Heat Man, I see Skeletor. Like you said, battle armor is the biggest thing, but depending on how they use it in the show, I could be all for it. I like that they're just using it. I mean, I'll give them that no matter what, because you know, I'll, the only time we ever had the variants really come up was 2000 X. And I always got a big grin on my face each episode. They would do that because yep. they did it. So I like that this, this series is definitely moving in that direction because it, number one, you know, it's something that isn't, it, it isn't always done. So you're seeing something new. If you haven't watched 2000 X or if you liked it on 2000 X, and then number two, it is the whole, okay, this this line in this show is probably going to be pushing toys more than Filmation ever did when we were kids. Yeah. Because it feels like they're going to have a variant for whatever they do in the story on on this series. And that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, these I'd have to see on the shelf and I'd actually have to show them to my son and see what reaction he gets before I really think I want to get these because... It, it, they do feel a little like they do look a lot more. This is a kid oh, wow. play toy compared Absolutely. to the stuff we've been, mm -hmm. we've been getting over the last 20 to, you know, however many years now. hundred percent so. agree. But they're, I think they're going to be fun. I think kids are going to be attracted to them. Um, did you catch the gray skull? The gray skull. Look? Yeah, if you look right at the top of the package, you can see Castle Grayskull. I'll have to look at that. You have to look at that closer later. when you can zoom, yeah. you can zoom in on it later. Uh, it's, okay, it, it's kind of bluish. It's glowing. There's lots of lightning coming down. Um, but yeah, if you look right at the top of the package above the window, you can see Grayskull, and then right underneath Battle Armor He Man, because he's holding it over another figure, you can kind of see the top of it a little bit better. But cool. I think I'm it's going to be fun. 
I'm looking forward to it. I I think this has a potential to just be a fun, fun story. Yeah, this the show in general, I'm actually getting more and more pumped for because we don't know as much about this one as we do with Revelation. And it hasn't been beaten into the ground in the groups online, at least, where like there's this typical feeling of this one's just going to suck. But it's like, mm-hmm. you don't know that. You're going to... You know, it's like the, it could do a whole different angle that makes you go, well, this isn't chapter and verse everything I knew before. And it's kind of fun to have. I don't have all the answers to what they're doing here. It's making me sit and watch it and go, well, that's different the way they did it. That could be kind of fun. You know, it's it's not rewriting your childhood. It's just here's a new take on something that we grew yeah. up with. You know? Exactly. Um, I'm going to put it out there again, though. <sighs> I will lay money on it at this point. And I'm not entirely sure why, but every time I see something here, I'm like, they are going to make He-Man and Skeletor brothers in this one. I have no idea why I think that, but the more and more I see, the more and more sure I become. Um, Looking at these, it really feels like they're playing up the two sides. I think, if it, I think they're going to do like the t- kind of the two half of the power sword thing. Skeletor's got like the evil power tech and He-Man's got the good stuff. And, and I don't know, it just feels kind of natural or cliche in my mind to make them brothers for that. But I just, I have a feeling they're going there. It, it's, it's a riff uh, riffing on a uh, Thor. And that's, a, that's a, like yeah. f- this, this line <laughs> in and of itself, this whole idea kind of, we we were talking about that and it's like well in thor they did you know yeah. magic is science you haven't figured out how to use yet and all that and and it's you know or that, that you can't understand yet or whatever and it's <laughs> like if they're going with that as your technology angle it really wouldn't shock me if they did like okay maybe they are brothers keldor now is just you know his yep. brother or his stepbrother mm-hmm. or his half brother or whatever and then you have randor you know, being the one who's, you know, like, oh, those kids, you know, or yep. whatever. And and it's like, you know, Keldor is always the one getting into trouble and Adam's the one always having to get him out of trouble or whatever, maybe, or, or maybe the other way around. Who knows? Because like, Loki was trying to get Thor out of trouble in his first movie at points. Yeah. Um, at least initially. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, if they go that route, it, again, it's not going to ruin anything of what I love about masters because this is its own thing. So if they, if they went there, they were thinking of doing that when, um, uh, 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 Wadlow, uh, Jeff Wadlow was doing the the thing and the, uh, the movie treatment. And he was talking about, you know, paring it down to make a digestible story for a movie. And if I remember right, I could be wrong. Please, you know, tell me if I'm wrong but I, I could have swore his version of the treatment of the movie was they were going to be brothers because it made it a little more streamlined to tell a story like that for his version, at least it's like, okay, it's, it's something different. I mean, Orko in this one, we, we found out Orko in this one is a little more technological than he is just. Oh, no, that, so that, that was debunked. That was actually apparently from Voltron. Oh, that is Voltron? Image. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, I well, found that out at, after the last time I posted it. Someone finally popped up. Because we had it back months ago with that Orco, and no one could ever say anything. And then I posted it again, you know, after mm-hmm. that Orco's, uh, was it Orco's Day Off book? And then yeah. someone popped up right away and was like, oh, no, that's from the last season of Ultron. And I'm like, oh, okay. So, never mind. Son that's got nothing of a... to do with anything. And I watched that show. Yeah, I can't even remember. That. All right, <laughs> whatever. All right, whatever. Moving on. Uh, Entertainment Weekly's first look. Sean, tell them what we got on the screen. All right, we have the uh, group shot of Orko, Andra, Tila, Roboto, and Evelyn. We have a very close-up view of a hostile-looking fierce beast man. We have a looks like fight-ready yet noble uh, moss man, 
and a very Prince Valiant slash 2000 X looking Adam raising the sword aloft. Yeah. I like that, Adam. I do too. It, it, it makes me think of what we could have had if filmation could have gone the route of he should have been younger and, and skinny and then he becomes He-Man. <laughs> and this, this to me honors the initial idea of what they wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And plus I love 2000X so on top of that it's like yay! Nice mix of both worlds then. You got some nice effects around him. Obviously, this is a transformation sequence, but uh, I'm just, I, I like it. Looking at everything here, um, obviously, there's going to be, there's going to be some passage of time. There's going to be some things happening. Uh, Moss Man and Beast Man, they look good there. I'm going to wait till I can see more to really talk about them, but mm-hmm. um you guys will see on the next page here, uh, Tila here has a completely different hairstyle than she starts with. So I, I really think we're going to see some progression. These stories are really going to mean something. Uh, we're obviously dealing with an end of the world situation again, as I've speculated from the beginning. Um, well, it, that, that image <laughs> is the one that sparked so much controversy um but here's here's my theory on that and i love to at least have it recorded to see if i'm right in july when it actually airs Mm -hmm. so you look at that group shot and you do have i in the prequel comic you're seeing evil lynn is having her typical evil lynn uh look on the cover at least right and then here it's like everybody is a little more they're 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 hiding there is this feeling of they're hiding who they really are and i all i'm thinking is whatever it is and i'm guessing based on other things that we've seen this week i'm guessing skeletor is the the spark that ignites everything that's happening in this show oh yeah and i think what happens based on this one image which granted i'm turning into the people who are going nuts about this image in my own my own way, but I see it as Evil Lynn realizes, oh crap! Like he just did what I didn't re- expect him to do, and I didn't think of a way to counter what he's trying to do, and so I have to go to the palace. Right, I have to fall on the sword, and I have to get help because otherwise, no one can stop this. And so you see Evil Lynn looking like, and, and Matt Rodriguez, he was saying he thinks it could be she's in disguise, a variant version of herself and all that when we talk to him. So it's like Roboto has a disguise for yep. the most part. Tila, a disguise. Andra, I don't know what she'll look like, but I'm guessing a disguise. And then Tila having her hair different. To me, I don't know if that's really necessarily saying anything socially, I think she's disguising herself, even using her hair because she's pretty well known as the captain of the guard. Right. So she's doing a hairstyle that's going to throw people off and you see her and you're like, no, nah, that's not Tila. You know, I think that's really what's happening in the scene instead of it being some sort of social agenda. Everybody keeps worrying about. And that, that, I mean, you can't, you can't judge a still picture and say that everything's woke now, you know? Yeah. Um, I, obviously they're, they're either on the run or on the hunt for something. Like you said, they're trying to be, if not disguised, at least less noticeable. They're on a mission. They formed an uneasy alliance with evil Lynn and, you know, they're, they're on a quest for whatever. And I'm good with that. I'm intrigued. I'm mm-hmm. going. I'm sitting here going. You know what are they on a quest for? You know. Sure. Um, and you know I've there there have been complaints around the community. Oh yeah. But at the end of the day, I just want to say, you know, one of the biggest complaints is this shot here: Evil Lynn, Tila, Andra. And that these women have muscles. Well, duh. Yeah. You want Tila to fight Whiplash, Clawful, Trapjaw? 
You want her to be the captain of the Royal Guard? You want her training since she was the age of eight, till she since she was old enough to hold a bow and arrow? But you don't think that woman is fit? Yeah. Of course she has muscles. Why wouldn't yeah. she? Yes, are they better than my muscles? Absolutely. Am I jealous? Absolutely. But by <laughs> God, that is a warrior goddess there. Yeah. Of course they should have muscles. Well, it, it, really quick, uh, I mean, gee, just look at Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Like the, in the movie, you look at those Amazons. Right. Those Amazons got some, they, they've got some muscle on them. And you know what? That doesn't make anything less feminine or less this, and it doesn't make them lesbians or whatever. It's just, they are athletic <coughs> and they are warriors. That's the right. whole point. Everybody on Eternia, who's a main character, Masters of the Universe, right. with the exception of Adam, is somebody who's fighting one side or the other. And that's kind of the whole point, you know? Right. No. That's all I got to say on that. Let's look at the next set of pictures. Let's do it. All right. So here we got Skeletor holding his Havoc staff with energy crackling off. We've got Sorceress... Uh, doing some sort of spell in front of He-Man. Uh, we got He-Man on Battle Cat rearing up in the throne room. And we got He-Man and Skeletor locked in combat in the middle of a forest. These right uh, here, these are the pictures that made me go, yes, mm -hmm. they get it. Well, it, like it, when they <laughs> said Powerhouse Animation Studio was going to be the studio to do this, I, I'm not. I'm not kidding. Literally, this is the kind of stuff that went through my head the moment they said it because of Castlevania, and then watching Sice Manos, mm -hmm. watching Blood of Zeus, and in my head, I'm like, if it doesn't look close to that, I'm gonna actually go wah. And when I saw this, I'm like. That that is everything that I was thinking we were going to see on the screen, and I was not disappointed in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, and not not only that, but just the fact that, like, you look at the forest; it's bright, it's colorful. I mean, it's not it's not filmation, but it's still in that vein. You know, there mm -hmm. it's not dark; it's not gritty. It's, you know, there. it's probably going to be the evergreen forest. And it is just as bright, colorful, sunshiny. You know, they're not, they're not feeling the need to hide or darken up anything like so many people want to do nowadays to make it super serious, guys. Like, no, they, they are getting that you can have these bright, colorful adventures and still be serious. Because every picture we see here... It looks life and death. Like, this is some serious stuff going down here. But they didn't mm -hmm. just black, you know, shadow everything and been like, oh, look how super serial we are. We got, we're in, we're in shadows and the sun never shines on Eternia. Oh, because we're, everything's super serious. No, they, I, I mean, even, like I said on the Adam stuff, the effects, those effects off the sorceress. Those look like filmation type effects. Like they like the, the bright lights, the glittering, the colors. Like they are embracing all of all of the, the feel of the vintage series. No, mm -hmm. it's not a one-to-one -one filmation. I've said it since the beginning it wasn't going to be. But they've embraced the, the heart of it, I feel, looking at this. Yeah, and the other thing too that impresses me especially with what I like is I feel like 2000 X isn't gone. No, there's very much a, they, like when you look at the way that they, they mm -hmm. drew and I even saw uh Yuka, he posted like a, here's what 2000 X yeah. looked like with Skeletor. And then he compared it with this exact shot that you're posting here. And it's like, it's not, it's like, it's, it's like, they're like cousins, you know, and right. I kind of dug that where, you know, it's like it's they're trying to honor two different generations worth of fans. And for me, being one that I started out with, you know, mini comics, filmation, 2000 X, all of it just looks right to me. Right. And, you know, it's like people complaining about, you know, the harness, but the, the, 
the the H now being the logo. It's like, well, yeah, I love that's it. a Mattel thing. I, I I I actually think it works well. I I still have <laughs> issues with that shape of the the harness itself compared to the H in that way. Like, I kind of want the H to even be bigger than that personally. But you know what? It's still I always liked that H. It always looked regal. It looked like a sigil of He Man and all that when I was a kid. Um, so it's really fun to have it that this is now the iconic logo we're going to have going forward. Mm -hmm. That shot of he and a Skeletor going head to head, it reminds me of the uh, third episode of the beginning yep. when he's fighting Skeletor to save his father. You know, I really think that that's like really pulling at the nostalgia of, you know, I am he man, the most powerful yep. man in the universe. And they just boom together. And and it's like, you know, Sorceress looks like she literally just stepped off the filmation lot and just walked right into that that panel for the most part. There's very little they did to her to make her feel updated. It's like she already had a pretty streamlined design. Yeah. And it looks there she is, you know. Gave her a little more texture in the feathers and stuff like that. But yeah, she's sorceress. Battle Cat mm -hmm. looks ferocious. He looks awesome. Yeah. I, I love what they did with He-Man's harness. Like you said, I I think they nailed the H. They added the red dots back there, and mm -hmm. and they gave him like like it like it's links. They there's segments to it. Even more, I like that. Eternity War did that. Like it, like you said, they're kind of pulling. Yes, it at its heart, it's it's a continuation from the eighties but they still weren't afraid to kind of pull in a few other elements where necessary. And I think this, I mean, it could potentially be the best uh, He-Man animation to date once we see it. I mean, it the, the still images here look really solid. Mm -hmm. um, if this... And I think Powerhouse is pretty consistent throughout their series from what I hear that there's not usually a drop in quality like you get with some of the network shows. You know, you'll have some episodes that are a little more rushed or whatever. So if it keeps this up, this could this could easily be one of the best animated. Um, and then it's just going to come down to the script for me, which, you know, I, I hope it, it doesn't fall victim to the... Uh, to kind of the thing lately where, where everyone's got to kind of push certain agendas. I hope we just get a good action adventure story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I honestly think this is the show that I'll, cause like my bar for the action will always be 2000 X because yeah. they were able to do action sequences that were individual. And, and at this one, when we see a trailer for this, it's it's going to be enough to let you know. Okay, all bets are off. The powerhouse brought it, you know, and um, that that for me is going to be interesting to see. And then, like you said, the the story, which hmm. at this point, you know, a lot of people are already pointing to Eternity War and going, "This is probably a taste of what this story is supposed to be." You got Rob David involved and everything. And I feel like that is the story he's the most interested in telling because he's already told it once and there's elements already coming through in this. So it's like he's passionate enough about that to go, yeah, there's a pretty good chance it's probably going to be a very serious grab you by the neck and pull you through these 10 episodes um, tale. Right. You know, and straightforward adventure tale with He-Man back. Only time will tell. I'm looking forward to it, though. This seeing these have have really upped the anticipation. Um, and this is July July 23rd, part one drops. Yes, yeah. Netflix is doing it to us. It's only ten episodes total, and they're splitting it into two parts. <laughs> so the first five episodes will be available July 23rd. No idea when the second. Five will be available. Well, also, uh, I was I was amused when all this came out because once the release date was was announced, uh, friend of the show and podcaster of the universe, Steve Bashotti, he he I was like, that "That's guy. my birthday." He he's like got all excited. That's my birthday. <laughs> it comes out on my birthday, and I'm like, "It's not your birthday anymore." Like, no, nope, <laughs> it isn't. It's Masters of the Universe Revelation Day. From now on, your birthday is not even on the chart. 
this is it. It's Masters of the Universe. We're finally getting this show that, oh dear God, has, like this is worse than being a a a a, an, a father for the first time right. in certain ways because it's like you you only have nine months to come to terms with that. This has been two years. <laughs> We're coming up on two years. It's about freaking time. Yeah. So oh, I hope to God anything else I like does not announce something two years prior yeah, and make yeah, me sit yeah. through all the people debating what it means and what it is for two years while I'm trying to enjoy it. That's all I ask. <laughs> oh. All right. And lastly, tying right into that, we got some nice clear high-res pictures of some toys. Yes, we did. So first up here, we've got Skeletor and Evil Lynn from the uh, Masterverse Revelation line. Um, yeah. I still... I still will have to see these in store before I decide how many I'm getting. Uh, note here, for those of you watching on YouTube, this Evil Lynn does come with her vintage uh, helmeted head as well. Just for this picture, they had her uh, that long white hair head on. Um, but yeah, I think all the proportion issues are taken care of here. Um, they look good. Yeah, I, I think it, I, I know there was a lot of complaints about the proportion issues previously, and I think the only one that still makes me look at them and I need to take a second and third look is always going to be Skeletor until I get them because yeah, he his it's like his I wish his hood billowed out a little more or something. He he does feel like, and it could be because that cape is draped behind him and it makes him look even wider. But um, but honestly, I mean, the, it, what what I love is. We just looked at the uh, screenshot of Skeletor with the energy coming off of him from the Revelation reveal. Yep. And looking at the figure, it's like, that's him. Right. There, it, you cannot look at that and go, that isn't what you're seeing on the screen if you watch the show. Um, so I, I'm actually really happy with that much so far. Um, yeah. Uh, and for me, it's like Skeletor is the one that if I end up buying He-Man, Skeletor is just a given. I'm going to get him no matter yeah. what, because there is that Alpha and Omega, which not to quote the movie, but <laughs> there is that Alpha and Omega feeling of if you get one, you got to get the other. Just like if you get Optimus Prime, you got to get a Megatron, at least for the love of God. You know, or yeah. for me, the, you know, if you get all four turtles, you got to get Shredder, at least, because then there's that feeling of, OK, there's the the main villain or whatever. So. And I I think there is a possibility that that skull face glows in the dark, or it's a really odd color choice for the for the paint. But to me, it looks like it's molded glow in the dark. Well, the, another thing I know when we talked about them, when we had the low res images, you were thinking how the hood is going to work. And yeah. that one image that they revealed this week that it was like a closer up of his face. And that's the one that's probably making you go, it could be glow in the dark. Did yeah. you notice the hood comes out a little bit? There is that, like, it looks to me like there is a little bit of space there. Yeah, I think there is. I think once we get them in hand, it'll let, look less plastered down, less yeah. jester like that it does here. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so we got, and they're splitting this up too. Because they they announced eight figures, but there's only four figures coming in the first wave. And then the second wave will have the other four that have been announced so far. So you got Skeletor and Evil in for the bad guys. And for the good guys, you've got He-Man and Mossman. Which, interesting combo. I mean, obviously you're yeah. going to release He-Man. But Mossman, while he does look interesting, he's a unique take. It's it's just interesting that he's first wave. Yeah, no kidding. Um, but again, He Man, he's looking a lot better. There's some close up pictures out there of his face. It looks real nice, real good guy. He's got a nice little smirk. Um, still not a hundred percent sold on the power sword, but that's just me. But it it is every official picture that gets released. He's looking a bit better, in my opinion. 
Yeah. I, when, when I saw the more close up photo of him, I, uh, the initial thought was this looks like him in like last stand when they have those moments of close ups of his face, when he's eyeing up all the villains. Right. And it's just like that face shape is really 2000 X. And, you know, I hated the 2000 X face for He-Man and I hated the, the hair for He-Man. I understood why it had to be that way on the figure. This, I'm not saying it's a hundred percent the way I want it to be. It does have a little bit more, like, I feel like, I feel like it's 75% there, but I like this one a bit better than I ever did the 2000 X feel of him. Right. So I like that. And, um, Honestly, like, <laughs> I think my biggest concern in these figures was, oh, God, don't give me Origins flappy knees. And <laughs> we, we're getting the double jointed knees, which yeah. makes me at least breathe a sigh of relief because I, I'm not a fan of what they did with Origins on that level at all. Um, and I, I, it's, it'll be interesting to even see, like, from, from being a Classics fan, one of the biggest complaints on Classics is the ankle articulation because you never know when those figures are going to topple. I'm curious to see what they do with these. Are they going to be the same or are they going to have ratchet joints this time around because of so many points of articulation? But honestly, it looks really faithful to what we're seeing in those images. And Mm -hmm. I I'm, I'm happy to get them and have them on the shelves as just, this is the show that they represent. And they also are in the same scale as what I like. And there's a little more to them than just the filmation, the club gray skull ones where there is a little more detail to them than the club gray skull offered. So I'm kind of like, all right, this is like a nice middle range of, I could collect this and not feel like I'm missing out, you know? Absolutely. And last up, we have the two deluxe figures in the wave. And that is battle cat and Skella God. Mm-hmm. Which Battle Cat, you all know Battle Cat, uh, looking very faithful. Uh, the helmet's a little more angular, but it's it's Battle Cat through and through. Traditional red armored horned helmet. A little, couple bronze accents in there, which are nice. Um, and then Skelegod is Skeletor as a god. He's, he's tripped out and... Silver black armor. He's got the big horns, a la Eternity War. He's got energy everywhere, and he has his own power sword. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, you were probably awesomely thrilled about that because yeah, uh, for our our viewers and listeners, I, Matthew Duch does not like spoilers at all. So I'm sure seeing this figure <laughs> the other day made him actually go. No. <laughs> well, let me let me read you something right quick here, if I can find it. Yuka posted earlier because they shown off some of the uh, the card backs, um, and there's little bios on them. Yep. So here's the one on the back of Skelegod. Skeletor lives his life with a singular purpose. To control the unlimited powers of the entire universe. Time after time, the bane of Eternia was thwarted by He-Man and the heroic warriors. What kind of monster would be unleashed should they be unable to stop the Lord of Destruction? Surely a raging storm of horror and terror that even the bravest dare not imagine. So... Is this actually something that happens or is it something that they're afraid of happening and this is what sets it into motion? Is it is it a, a, a premonition of the sorceress that she views this in a dream and that's what sets He-Man on this journey? Or does this actually happen? That bio well. kind of seems up in the air. It's more like, This is what may happen if Skeletor wins. Yeah, and these figures are going to be released uh, actually a month from today. Supposedly June 15th, and we're recording this May 15th. So, Which means my area will see them about July 30th, 
So, well, and and who knows when I'll see him myself. But mm-hmm. I, I'm just I'm thinking, you know, they don't want to spoil too much, but also uh, anything <clears throat> that I've heard Kevin Smith in interviews talking with this show is. It will start out with kind of like that, you know, it'll feel like the old show. And my guess is feel like the old show means it'll probably start out at the palace and maybe yeah. Orko's goofing around, pisses off man at arms and all this stuff. And then something is going to happen. And I have a feeling it's going to be something along this where, you know, he does manage I, one way or the other. He gets to figure out the power of Grey Skull and Skeletor becomes the Skele God. It's just my guess. Um, yeah. But I have a, that would be something where it's like, okay, then the name of it actually is like, oh, revelation. Holy crap. Now we have, you know, we have Skella guy running around. What does that mean for Adam? And then right. how does it, you know, all that other stuff. So it's like, okay, this could be interesting on that level. And they, they wanted to make it as vague as possible because these are being released a month before the show. Yeah. So it's not going to tell you everything, but I have a feeling this figure represents something that will happen on the first episode because it's otherwise, right. if it happens at the second part, man, are you doing something stupid for the story? You know, you're doing yeah. a disservice to this new show. Or so even if it does happen on the second part, I think that could still let, like, like you said, I think in the first episode, we will see this form of Skeletor, whether it's actually Skeletor, Winning, or I think more likely, first episode will be Sorceress having uh, a premonition of some sort, seeing a mm-hmm. dark future. You know, we're gonna see this character right off the bat, or they wouldn't be releasing it like this. Yeah. Um. But that. <coughs> excuse me. That new uh, that new battle cat. I'm in trouble. Because that is a cool <laughs> looking battle cat, and he's got ankle articulation. Yeah, and where, and where was this with Origins again? <laughs> the best Sorry, part just... when you take off his armor, he's actually got a cringer face underneath. Mm-hmm. Not a battle cat face. Mm-hmm. For the first time ever, you can actually take off the armor, and he actually looks like cringer. Yeah. I'm in trouble because I have to get this battle cat. <laughs> well, and if I'm going to get a battle cat, I better get a He-Man to put on him. And if it, you have to, if you have a He-Man, you have to have a Skeletor. And oh no, <laughs> this is the pyramid scheme that Mattel has been building all along. Yeah, no, like when I see that, I'm like, if I didn't have the classics battle cat, this would definitely be. I have to get this because it's, it would be similar to that, you know? And Mm -hmm. um, I'd say, you know, like it is fun that they have the cringer face and I like that they actually have little spaces where the, the fang can come out on, on, on his face and all that stuff, which I think is is really fun. Um, I'm still not a big fan of that helmet shape based on like, I mean, when, when we were kids and, even the classics and stuff, we have that typical battle cat helmet. This is a little more angular than I'd like it to be, but it's it growing is cool on they, me, though. See, it, when I see it on the show, that's where it's probably going to really go, okay, this works, but yeah. when, since seeing it in the, the low-res images and even here, I'm like, like, when you look at it dead on, I like it, but yeah. when you look at it from other angles, it looks a little weird how that <laughs> the uh, the points come down on either side of his mouth you know for me but but yeah no that that is one of the most fun parts about it is you take off that helmet you got a cringer and when i was a kid who who didn't when they were a kid right take off the armor when you had your adam figure come back out and there's cringer and he looked ferocious and ha ha cringer you know (laughs) kind of a feeling um and yeah the, the 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 paul articulation is killing me it's like yeah how come it's here but you did. <laughs> which no, is why the, this is the version I'd go for. So. He's got that midsection articulation back. He's got nice neck articulation. It, you know, he looks good. And I actually saw the blurb on the box before I saw his picture where it does say like, oh, yeah, you know, take off the armor to be cringer. And I'm like, yeah, but it's, I'm like, he still has a ferocious face and everything, just like, you know, classics and vintage. And then I saw this picture. I'm like, oh, my God, they, they actually did it. 
Like they, they actually put Cringer under there. And yep. that's why I had to get it. It's like, okay, if nothing else, there's my Cringer for the shelf. Um, exactly. I will say though, Sean, this is six inch scale. So maybe you can swap those helmets back and forth. I was thinking that too, because I actually have a, uh, I have the uh, vintage one even. And yeah. I, I'd be fine with just putting the vin- vintage helmet on them. I mean, it's going to be a little <laughs> darker than than the uh, the harness, but it, it, that doesn't bother me too much, to be honest. But yeah, eh, I don't the, know. I mean, it's fun. Either way, it's, it's fun. fun. And I appreciate this way more than I ever liked the Origins one. So right off the bat, you you're at least got my attention by knowing you can fully articulate him into poses that right. actually work. Uh, and last we have here, uh, here is the back of the Battle Cat box and with wonderful character art by the one and only Eamon O'Donohue. Very mm-hmm. nice job, Eamon. He is doing two illustrations for every package. There'll be the back picture like this, and there's also a side, like, profile picture. Um, mm-hmm. And that'll be all the figures and the deluxes. So, very cool. And I gotta say, the minute I saw this, I knew it was Eamon. I was waiting for him to verify it. But just looking at this mm-hmm. He-Man with Zor up there, I'm like, that is Eamon's He-Man right there. Yep. Yeah. I I love that they're doing... It. First off, you know, for anybody who loves that Axel... And, and Nate uh, as well with Castle Grayskull, you know, they're having fans doing the artwork for this stuff. I love that they brought him in to do this because he's just, he's a personality and a half. But also, yeah. he, he has done some very iconic images since being a part of the community that, like yes. the sorceress print and everything, you know. And, and he had the she one that a lot of people really like too. And it's like, you know, he, he also, that statue where it's He-Man holding the sword over his head and you know, and Battle Cat, that was his design. And I think that's one of the more, the most, um, out of out of recent years, one of the more iconic looking He-Man Battle Cat pieces. Now mm-hmm. there's this, which like you said, I mean, it's like the minute you see that, it's like, yeah, that's him. That's, oh, yeah. that's his art right there. All right. I think that's all I've got. Let's switch back over here. Now we're back. All right, did I miss anything? What a whirlwind week. I want to say that was it. We talked about the prequel book the last time. So, yeah, yep. we caught up on it. it. It's like you just take some time off and look what happens. This is not. I don't even think we took any time off. I think we're, <laughs> I think we're doing a no. weekly show again lately. Wait, what I mean is we're not doing this <laughs> daily because it feels like daily we're getting stuff now. And it's like, man, by the time that we get to the end of a week, we're sitting here going, what happened again this week? And we ha- you know, we got to remember, like, you know, just everything <laughs> lately is masters, oh, which, everything. you know, for a brand where we were discussing the mini comics and, right. and uh, episodes starting this show out. And now I feel like, we've transitioned into now we're just talking news almost all the time, which to be honest is actually kind of fun because yep. it is exciting. There's a lot of good new so stuff coming out, out like weekly at this point. Yeah. So and recap those dates real quick. So June 15th, the master voice verse toy line launches July 23rd, the Netflix show launches uh, the revelation show. And July seventh, mm-hmm. the prequel comic from Dark Horse comes out. So it's it's coming. Bam, bam, bam. bam. <laughs> if you don't like He Man by the end of this summer, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Our, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right, what you got for us, Sean? You look like you get you got something there. Well, I I did a quick post. We. We decided we were going to do this really like impromptu tonight. And I was like, all right, I'll see if uh, we get any questions, comments, geek them. And amazingly, (coughs) some of our (laughs) listeners came through here. So uh, now if I say your name wrong, I'm sorry. And uh, let me know the correct uh, pronunciation the next time, because this was a whirlwind of us getting this one together. But uh, Jay Grava... 
I want to say Gravite or Gravati, maybe. I think that might be it. Um, he it, he did more comments than anything that questions, but uh, he said, oh, as always, I have a lot of comments, some good, some bad. Lots of <laughs> love him. for the new... Well, he, he said, lots of love for the new Origins figures coming out and the ones shown on Pixel Dance channel uh, yep. feel let down from the Masterverse. Won't get started on the anime figures. The new animated series looks like a successor to 2000X more than uh, so than Filmation. Wait, and wait. Uh, I'm leery Kevin Smith's work is either going to be really good or a snooze fest. So there's again, that. Again, I just want to point out, Kevin Smith is merely the showrunner. Okay, That's this true. is... He, he's written two episodes... I want to say I think I thought there were five writers and they each got two episodes. I I wouldn't be surprised. Probably, you know, one in the first part, one in the second part. I think he does the first episode. I uh, think so itself. But anyways, and at at most, each writer had two episodes at most. mm -hmm. One. Some of them may have only had one. Uh, Rob David and Mattel had the storyline and presented Kevin Smith with it. So, I don't know if that if that dissuades your fears or not, but I'm just saying, I know I've been hearing a lot of it ever since it was in that, well, Kevin Smith, Kevin Smith, Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith is just one piece in this big machine that is turning out Masters right now. So, we yeah. can't lay it all on his feet, you know. Um, but I have high hopes based on what I know Rob David has done and, you know, Ted Biaselli at Netflix has been a big influence. And he's been a part of the Masters community since before there was a Netflix. You know, mm-hmm. so I think there's some good hands there. Um, and for Kevin Smith, for his role in it, I think we're going to be all right. Yeah, I, I look at it's like a, I, I said it a few times in the past. He's he's the name that they figure. Here's the lightning rod person. Right. That's going to bring the news. And if it wasn't for him uh, going to PowerCon in 2019 and doing the big announcement, yep. Uh, imagine like all of these media outlets all of a sudden just honed in on that because he yeah. was there announcing it. If it was anybody else, and I, I, I was actually thinking of this. This is a question that uh, that you and I could go back and forth on sometime. Uh who, what other name would be a name that would reassure the people that would make sense that isn't Kevin Smith at this point? I ooh, can't think man. of any name that I, I would be like, ooh, this. Yeah. Well, even, even saying, having Kevin Smith doesn't reassure people. So well, No, 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 no. But I understand that, but that's what I'm saying. Who would be the name? Because, like, okay, I would not picture Kevin Smith as being the showrunner of a Masters of the Universe no. show. Uh, it's just a given. I He would not be on my radar. But he also is a pop culture personality where then it invites, here's, a, here's people that he brings to the table. Here's the media outlets and stuff that bring to the table the fact that he's now involved in the nostalgia of this brand and blah, 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 blah. blah. You know, you, you, it mix you know, rinse, rinse twice, repeat kind of a thing. Um, but then I'm like, well, what would be a name? Who would be a name of somebody that maybe wasn't involved in masters previous? Oh, here we go. The, the oh, finger. And it was, was not wasn't, the bad finger. Wasn't involved in masters wasn't involved previously. previously and could bring people to this as something new to remind people who haven't been fans like we have, this is something that they love from childhood, but new, but also the people like us who are like, we're, we're really excited to get something new out there. I'm still going to say my answer. You're going to yell at me because technically they were involved in masters previously one more than the other, but uh, uh, Bruce, Tim and Paul Dini, um, you know, Bruce, yeah, he w- he did many comics and he was involved. He was a, an artist on Filmation, but just one of the, you know, he wasn't a lead artist or anything. Mm-hmm. But just showing what they've done with the with the with the Timverse, you know, Batman the Inmate series, Justice League Unlimited and everything else. I think if you were to bring those guys in, 
even just Bruce Tim, if you really want to go the less connected, um, just because I think I think kind of the same thing that Kevin's put out there. I think they're guys who sit down and they want to figure out a world and they want to figure out how to pay homage to that. Like, yeah, Bruce Tim was a big Batman fan. That helped. But he still, you know, when he got to the bigger Justice League and everything, like he, there's no way he followed all of those characters. No, he sat down and he's like, okay, what makes the question the question? What makes Black Canary Black Canary? You know, yeah. and and he would he changed some stuff. He mixed stuff up. Hawk Girl and Hawkman. He played flat, fast and loose with that in that world. And I'm not even saying just him because I know again there, especially with animation. There's a whole group of people here. You know, mm-hmm. laying it all on the feet of one person isn't how it works ever. But it usually is one person who's kind of the, the face of the series. Um, but I think he's he's one of those guys who would sit down and go, okay, what's this property about? How do we make it work today? Or how do we make it work with what they want us to do? You know? And that's okay. and that's the baseline. And Kevin's been upfront about this since the beginning. He's like, he's like, I want to make, you know, Mattel came to me. They pitched me this. It sounded like fun. So let's do it. Let's make a Masters series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not a, not hey Kevin, how can we make Masters more like Jay and Silent Bob, or how can we make it more like this or that? They no. He's going. I want to make something in Masters. I want to play sure. in the sandbox, and that's the key to it. Hmm. Yeah. See, I the only name I could think of, and this is not a name that would draw people the way Kevin Smith would, or mm-hmm. or someone of that caliber, where they're a name and they're a cult of personality within pop culture like that. <coughs> um, but the team that I would really love if they could have gotten them together is the team that relaunched. Voltron on Netflix. Okay. And and honestly, I can't even use what I my guidelines were in my question to you because one of the showrunners was Joaquin Dos Santos, if I rem- if I remember his name correctly, and he worked on 2000X. So oh, right no. off the bat, I'm already shooting myself in the foot by saying that. <laughs> but Lauren Montgomery was another person who she's she's definitely created a a really interesting yep. um career within animation and is really she's like led a lot of different dc properties even like she did the direct to to video animated wonder woman uh Mm -hmm. movie they did the animated one that told her origin story and everything and you know she's been involved in some of these brands that i'm like if if they got her and they got him and i i think there was one other showrunner on voltron that series worked for me on so many levels of this is the blueprint of how you could reintroduce a show that I knew when I was a kid, but I didn't have as much owning to it the way I did He-Man though. I will say that, but it invigorated me every time a new, every single new season. I was like, it's, I I have to watch. I got to see what happens next. And I just sit there and watch this thing and it would just draw me in. And that's what I'm hoping for out of this series. But I don't have like a, like you said, Bruce, Tim, Kevin, so I don't have anybody like that where I'd go this, you know, or whatever, because it, it really is like that's that's I think why they did it. I think it was like here yeah. out of left field, Kevin Smith, and he's going to be the showrunner. But we got all these other people working behind the scenes to make sure it feels like masters for everybody, you know. <laughs> and like I said, he's he's had a lot of comic work. He's done a lot of DC TV stuff. I mean, he's done. Everyone just thinks Jay and Silent Bob, Mall Rats, Clerks, but really, I mean, he's he's got a ton of prop of licensed properties he's worked on already, and he didn't he didn't view a skew universe them. So a- admit it though, admit it. When this show hits, if we don't get a single, you know, Moss Man and Manny Face is smoking a doob outside of Grey Skull moment, won't you be <laughs> validated? To just go, I told you they weren't going to do that crap here. They're doing it legit. And um, yep. I can't wait. And I'm hoping that there will be people going, oh, and never being able to say anything in 
a bad light or in a critic criticizing negative way because i really would be blown away if i watched this show and all of a sudden here's yeah. roboto doing yeah. some kind of toilet humor or whatever it's like oh no, no. Right. it doesn't it, you know like beast man isn't going to have diarrhea and do something stupid in an outhouse in front of you know whatever it's, yes no it, it's it not is gonna not that it's kind not of gonna thing. happen exactly so now that I've gone way down a rabbit hole, let's go to the next one, <laughs> which is uh, the very reliable Manny Gonzalez. And he wrote, what? Yeah, here, here's funny. Listen to this. What type of episode or episodes would you like to see coming from the new He-Man series? But he didn't specify which. He did not, he did not say whether it was Revelation or the new one. Um, he says, I'd like to see History of Eternia. Uh, Definitely character development, plenty of great action and emotion. Finally, plenty of grace, plenty of in Grayskull, Royal Palace, and Snake Mountain visuals to start with. Yes. I think we've answered this question throughout the episode tonight. But <laughs> yeah, unfortunately for Manny, but yes. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, like I said, I think it's going to be the end of the world fair. Skeletor either getting the power or potentially getting the power, or maybe that's the big break there. You know, maybe it's uh, the end of episode five is when he gets the power, takes over, and then the second half of it is how they come back from it. Um, but I'm excited. I think I think it will. I think it'll have lots of action, adventure, heart. Um, you know, Kevin really seemed to get the relationship aspect, the family aspect of uh, He-Man. And, uh, yeah, I think we're going to see some good stuff here. Well, even uh, since we're saying it, 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 we feel like it's going to have an influence from Eternity War. Mm -hmm. um, I can honestly say, like when I when I read that series, the one moment that got me uh, there were a few really good ones between He Man and Randor with that feeling of okay, the the guys is lifted and they could right. talk together, which was kind of cool. Uh, but there, there was definitely that that and spoilers for anybody who hasn't read it yet. But there is this scene at the end where it, it goes into like when when King Grayskull was hammering the original power sword, and there's there's Adam and he's hammering away at mm -hmm. at something, and then he just it, the 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 final shot you see of that comic is him holding the sword to you, and right. saying you have the power and. I get a little misty. I'm thinking of that personally, because when I was a kid for, you know, it was that to me was the equivalent of the Christopher Reeve Superman ending where he's flying around the earth. And then he just looks at you and smiles and flies on. And it makes you go like, he knows me. And right. I felt like that reading it as a 30 something man, <laughs> even though it's a comic page, but it got that feeling of like when I was a kid, one of the things that I absolutely would have loved is to be able to hold the power sword and just once right. say I have the power and suddenly something could happen. And it, it tapped into that nostalgia that I'd always had deep down of, I know it couldn't happen. But then when I saw that page, I'm like, but it could, you know, and it, it felt good to have it end on that <laughs> note. Um, I agree. I, I think you're going to see world ending. I, I'm interested to see, um, how, because we've seen that the new, um, the, the screenshots we've seen from entertainment weekly, they, they look similar and there's definitely not like, they're not overhauling the designs, right? but there's definitely a feeling of there's an updating to some mm -hmm. of this, which we have been saying all along. That's probably what they're doing. I'm very curious to see what the inside of, uh, both snake mountain and castle Grayskull look like now, because even, uh, they have that one shot of He-Man and Battle Cat, and I'm pretty yeah. sure that's in the Royal Palace, and that looks like an update already with the background, right. the way it looks. So, Grey Skull, I'll be very curious to see because if they go filmation, or are they going to do something a little more like we're going to combine the playset with filmation? Maybe give it, us something we. I never think it's going to be a little combined because I, we've already seen it in the Revelation comic and. Uh, Yuka had posted some screenshots from yeah. Netflix. Apparently, if you go on there, you can trigger like a, a little video of, and you can see a little bit of the interior of Gray Skull and uh, the outside. And it looks very, almost honestly, like the Icon Heroes statue of Gray Skull they did a couple years or a few years, many years, 
back. Um, but yeah, Snake Man, I'm really interested in. See if they go more 2000X, more filmation, more playset. I mean, there's a lot of options there. Mm -hmm. And and uh, funnily, funny enough, uh, the animation you talked about that Yuka did screenshots from, I've seen the video. I can't get it to work on my TV. I found the revelation <laughs> thing, and it just comes up with that image of the Roboto, Tila, yeah. Orco, and all that. And that's all that just sat there. And I'm like, oh, come on. I want it to work. It won't work on anything I have. But but what amused me is the uh, Bear McCreary theme kicks in. Oh, it does. And it's nice. identical to what we heard. So now I can't not hear, oh, Bear. Oh, Bear. Oh, Bear. <laughs> Every time I hear. It's like, yeah. Kevin, if there was one thing you messed up, it was the fact you talked over that <laughs> whole thing and made us have that to think of every time that we hear the transformation from now on all right um jacob hicks who he's a first time uh commenter which is cool welcome Jake. um his question it, 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 he just says i have a, a figure distribution question have you ever seen the deluxe in a walmart no and i have not personally no i think up in canada they're getting them at walmart right now I think that's the only place I've seen people posting it about. Um, and that's the thing with Origins. The U.S. has been very behind on distribution. I mean, it seems like Malaysia and Canada are getting everything first, and then the U.S. is a month or even two behind. So I haven't even seen yeah. anybody. I haven't seen anybody in the U.S. actually get a land shark in stores. I don't know mm -hmm. if you have, but. No, no distribution's I, messed up. I I know uh, Jesse. He mentioned that he was at Target a couple weeks. I want to say maybe you know like how many weeks ago, and he did see a Ram Man for the first time. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that to me. He's like, "Oh yeah, they had it j just down at, at the one that I normally go to." And I think that's the only deluxe figure I've heard of locally. I haven't seen the Battle Armors. Yeah, just this amount. I haven't seen Clamp Champ. <coughs> nothing. Excuse just last week, I don't know, just this past Tuesday, less than a week ago, is I finally found, I saw a Ram Man and a Clamp Champ, one of each. I've still never seen the Battle Armors. Um, I saw them at a comic book shop, but I've never, I haven't seen them actually at a retail store. Yeah. Yeah, so the distribution, I don't know what to tell you, Jacob. It, it's, it's not good. It's a little, yeah, it's a little frustrating and confusing. But I don't, I don't know if that's all Mattel, though, because at least at my Walmart, like, they are behind putting up stock. Like, there are just pallets lined up in the aisles because they have no place to go with them um, because their back room's only so big, and they apparently just don't have enough help right now to get the product up. So I, I, can't, I can't even say you blame that on Mattel, really, because I'll go in my mm -hmm. local Walmart usually at least once a week. You know, not looking for He Man, just ain't have to get stuff. We have a small town. We got a Walmart and we got a grocery store. That's all we got here in town. So if I need something, I got to go to Walmart if it's, you know, unless I want to make a trip. But the, I've gone in there and the boys' toy aisle has looked not changed from one visit to another many, many times. It's, yeah. It's like they just, it's, Sometimes a week or more between uh, stockings. Yeah, and uh, like my Walmart, I only see Skeletor and He-Man. Mm -hmm. And even the Target locally, um, I want to say, again, my friend Jesse, he saw a Roboto at one point. Oh, really? And like I said, he, he saw Ram Man, and, and I think he said he also saw Merman. But I'm not seeing these. I, I, I and uh, the Walmart. There's there's like three WalMarts within about a 30 minute radius of me. That's how nuts this is around my my uh, home. And the only one that I ever saw more than just He Man and Skeletor was around Christmas time. The smaller Walmart had all of the Wave One on the yeah. peg once. And then after that, I never saw them again. And I've never seen any more than just He-Man and Skeletor. And it's just, it's I, it's what it is. <laughs> oddly enough, Evil Lynn was pretty consistent in my Walmart for about a month. 
Um, hmm. And I've seen Beast Man, Man at Arms, and Teal. Like all of Wave One, I've seen enough where I could have gotten them if I wanted them. Um, mm-hmm. Evelyn hung on for a while, but other than that, I the regular figures I have not seen anything past Wave One in my area ever. So, mm. yeah, which also that'll make the Target exclusive. You because, like I said, Target. I don't even. I, I've seen Battle Cat. I've seen a Panther once. That's right. about it. So it, it's like this Rise of Evil two pack plus now this new Battle Armor shiny He Man. It's like that. That'd be a foregone conclusion. You're never going to see it here <laughs> in South Central Pennsylvania. This is how it works. Um, so now the comment, Lacey Dean. He says, "This is an amazing time to be a He Man fan. There's something for everyone." These yeah. are definitely aimed at kids, as in the. I'm I'm sure he means the, the, the new ones that we discussed, the CGI ones. So yeah, and I agree, it is a good time. <laughs> yes, Lacey, you are a hundred percent correct. This is this is a great time. If you if you can't find something you like right now with all this stuff coming out, then I I don't know what to tell you because there's yeah, so okay. much so much variety, you know. I, I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, it's yeah. a great time. So, and and he he's becoming a reliable listener as well. Jason Torrance came back again this time. Jason, welcome back. He says, "I have a question or two for the podcast. With all the new information we have gotten about Revelation, which character do you think will be the most changed from how they have been previously portrayed?" My guess is Orko. From the artwork, I think he is going to be a lot more serious. Also, I was wondering if all the characters and masters who are of all the characters and masters, who would you like to see get an overhaul in the new series? I look forward to the podcast. Have a great show. Hmm. So who who is going to be changed the most? Mm-hmm. Yeah, who's going to be changed from how they were previously portrayed? Yeah, it did probably have to be Orko. I'd, I'd agree with them there. Not even as much. I mean, obviously that design is probably the biggest uh, difference. But yeah, I just see them uh, aging him up, maturing him. Even if he still messes up, there's a different type of messing up. And we've talked about it in our orco centric filmation episodes, um, how there's two very different orcos. And I think this will see a more consistent orco and more of a, I'm thinking more of a, my powers are hard to control on Eternia rather than the child orco. Well, that that's the thing. Like with that group shot, He's got to be doing something right to be a part of that group because I they strike yeah. me as they're trying to be stealthy and they're trying to do something that involves you know being sneaky and being undercover. So I wouldn't be surprised if his powers have gotten better in right. one way or his control of them have gotten better. Um, I hate to agree, but I, honestly, like we haven't seen enough. Yeah, that's from, the hard part. Like we haven't even seen a man at arms. We haven't seen. <clears throat> we've seen Tila in two different ways, and honestly, I, I almost would say I, I'll be curious to see what they do with her, and not from not from all the negative crap. I would just like to see what they do with her because this feels like she's going to be stepping up in yes. this to have a portrayal that maybe is more mature and less. Um, uh, there are people out there that would say she was nagging. I would just say she yeah. she would be more mature and at least more in in like a acceptance position of not only Adam but also her role if she's going to maybe become the sorceress by the end of this. I don't know. It, it just mm-hmm. strikes me as there's a lot of things leading to her probably becoming the new sorceress the way it sounds to me. And that's just my own guessing, but um, I, I'm I'm going to be curious to see what they do with her in particular. Because also having Sarah Michelle Geller, she's not exactly who I picture in my head as the voice of Tila. Right. So I'll be curious to see with her playing Tila as well as like the the new way they're going to 
have her story possibly progress. Yeah, I, I could definitely go for that. And then for a second question about the uh, the which of the class the characters and masters uh, who what uh, uh, of all the characters and masters who would you like to see get an overhaul in the new series? Hmm. Would I like to see get an overhaul? I don't know if it's an overhaul so much, but I just, I want to see more. And I guess that's the other hard part of the first question is, especially going off the vintage era with filmation in the mini comics, like a lot of the side characters were basically one and done or, you know, uh, you know, Cyclone, he barely showed up in the cartoon. He had his one comic uh moss man he's another one he's only showed up in a handful of episodes so for me it's more it's not out of accounts as an overhaul but i just want to see those side characters be a bit more like 2000x where they actually get a chance to kind of explore them a little bit and make them feel like a a full-fledged character rather than just a, a a hero of the week type um so hey, you can take any of those Moss Man, uh, seeing Scare Glow heroes supposed to play a part in this. Like I just want to see these guys actually feel like full fledged characters, and I'm really hoping for some 2000 X style storytelling for them. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, I wouldn't say um, for this about the overhaul, but in general. Um, I feel like they're continuing the overhaul of him is Moss Man, mm-hmm. at least for the time being out of the, out of the characters I've gotten to see and, and seeing his figure in particular, that is because of 2000 X and the fact that I always loved the, the idea that he's in control of stuff. And it's I, a lot of people are throwing swamp thing around when they look at him and all that. I kind of dig it though. Yeah. It works for me. And it's the, the idea, you know, I, I think of like the, He's in charge of the green. The green is good. Therefore, he's using the green in any way possible to, you know, protect the attorney and fight back the evil and the darkness. And as a kid, he was never a character that interested me. I had him as a figure and okay, he's there. Uh, 2000X really amped him up in a way that right. interested me. And now this feels like it's it's still going. And also we're getting the figure that looks more like that versus 2000 X having the just here's the beast man flocked green, you know? So that interests me. And I am curious um, just to see what the, the evil Lynn deal is with that figure having, this is her outfit. I, you know, I'd like to know what her story is to be the way that she looks because you always typically go, she is like the opposite version of Tila. Just the colors are swapped out a little bit. And instead it's like, okay, what led her to look like that? Is it, she's just undercover. Is she, you know, trying not to get attention or is it something that's even more important to the character in this new show? How about that? How about overhauling the evil warriors, making them menacing and not as bumbling. Like Beast, Beast Man. Man, Beast, Beast Man. Man, and that shot is yeah, Beast Man. The savage. way I always, and, and like again, you know, I love 2000 X, but 2000 X still didn't do Beast Man in a way where he was ferocious. He, they right. did him as he he felt like this was a sidestep to filmation. The way they set him up. So if you have a Beast Man who is genuinely nightmarishly ferocious, and yeah, it's like that's what I'm you saying. don't go into the jungle, you know who's in there, you know that kind of a feeling. Like, holy crap, right. how cool would that be? You know, and um, him and I mean, they said Stinkor is going to be in it, and yep. another 2000 X. I loved that they introduced him there. I'll be very curious to see if he plays a minor role or if he's going to be a bigger player. And on top of that, just throw in another name, since we're talking Evil Warriors, how come Spike Or is in Wave 1? And what's that supposed to mean? Because that makes me just go like, well, you know what I mean? In in (laughs) Revelation, actual, here's the the figures. He was one of the announced. But it's like, when did he become one of those figures? You know, like, so obviously they're doing something there where he plays a role because 
I never pictured him as like a, you know, like Kevin Conroy is playing Merman, but we're getting a spike or first. Ooh, right. You know, I think they're just trying to spread him out. Same with Moss, man. Like I said earlier, being in, you know, wave one, it's like, okay, that's like, they're just trying to space it out. Get a heavy mm. hitter in each wave. So, I don't know. I'm excited. I think there's a lot of room to go with all of this. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So, okay. there we have it. That is those were the questions. Final questions, comments, concerns, and thank you, everybody who uh, who rallied literally two hours before we. <laughs> recorded tonight and gave us a little something that was great so on today's episode we learned that pretty much we need to go daily on this podcast because we can't keep up with all the news hitting us every freaking day leading up to the uh revelation uh tv show apparently it is the year of Mm he-man um but that's a good thing. That's a good thing because I feel like we have been in a drought for a lot of this stuff for quite a while. So this is, it, it's feast or famine. Um, anyway, if you want to get in touch with us, join our Facebook group, Legends of Grey Skull. You can uh, interact with us on Facebook. If you don't have Facebook or don't want Facebook, logpod85 at Gmail. You can email us there, send any comments, questions, concerns, and geek them our way. Uh, We're more than happy to reach out to you there, as well as now we're seeing on YouTube. Feel free to comment on our videos, share, subscribe, ring that bell, and uh, get the uh, notifications every time we put one of our episodes up and we have our big wall of geekdom of Masters of the Universe for uh, all you fans out there. So, uh, yeah, I think that is it. And I'll just end it with an until next time. Until next time, stay legendary. Oh, come on. Oh, Oh, bear. Oh, bear. Oh!